The Secret of the Indian by Lynn Reed Banks. Chapter 16. Panic. Okay, Omri, where have you hidden Patrick? Where is he, darling? Where's my son? Just wait till I lay my hands on him. Emma's face was actually the one Omri's eyes fastened on. She looked really pathetic. When she saw him looking at her, she gave her head a little shake, which he instantly understood to mean, I haven't told them anything. But they'd obviously been giving her a rough time, and Omri felt terrible about that. The mothers both looked as if they were about to pounce on him. His father simply looked baffled, so naturally it was his father he made for. Dad, can I speak to you alone? In my opinion, that would be most unwise, said Mr. Johnson. They all turned to look at him, and Omri saw his father's face tighten. He turned back to Omri. Let's go into the kitchen. Can I come? said Emma in a small voice, as if she thought it would be all as if she thought it would all start up with her again the moment Omri was out of sight. Yes, said Omri. Come on, Em. He really felt sorry for her. She actually seemed to be trembling as they entered the kitchen. She dropped something that clattered on the tiled floor. They both bent simultaneously, but Omri got there first. What she dropped was a plastic figure of a girl in red. He thought for a moment it was Bright Star's figure, but it was just an ordinary girl. Before he could return it to her, his father got between him and Emma, so Omri slipped it into his pocket. Now, Omri, you've got to tell me at once where Patrick is. When the brain is pushed to its limits, something always emerges, even if it's the worst possible thing, in this case, the truth. He's in my room, Dad. No, he's not, said his father promptly. We looked. Omri closed his eyes and waited, but there was more. But there was no more. Presumably, they simply hadn't noticed, or the little people had frozen into stillness. He opened his eyes again. His father was gazing at him expectantly. He's hiding. Hiding? What for? Where? Omri glanced at Emma. He's in, in the closet. His dad looked incredulous. Are you having me on, Omri? He can't have been in there all this time. I, I don't know. He was there when I left for school. But why? What was the idea? He didn't want to go home yet. And then his father said the most wonderful thing. Well, you'd better run up and fetch him. Omri's heart bounded with incredulous relief. Galvanized, he rushed to the door, and Emma followed close. And I think I'll, and I think I'll come too, remarked his father. Omri and Emma stopped dead. No, Dad! No? No, we'll go by ourselves, Omri turned and fastened his eyes on his father. Please, his father hesitated. This is all very mysterious, he said not at all lightly. I hope there's nothing going on that you two ought to be ashamed of, Omri. No, Dad. Okay, go on. But remember, we're down here waiting, all of us. And if you're not back with Patrick, PDQ, I'll be up there after you. They raced past the little knot of adults in the hall, up the stairs two at a time, all the way up to the attic. Omri's chief fear now was that after more than twenty-four hours, Patrick would Patrick would have come to some harm wherever he was. What if, when they brought him back, he was hurt or even... But it was useless to speculate. The vital thing was to get him back, but first Omri had to hide every bit of evidence of the magic. The second they got into the room, he bolted the door and made for the seed tray. Give her back, he turned. Emma was standing by the cupboard. What? I'll put her in myself. Put who in? What are you talking about? Panted Omri. It's the end, isn't it? You're sending them all back now. You won't do any of it again because the grown-ups are near to finding out, and it's got too dangerous. Omri looked at her, his face frozen. She was Patrick's cousin, and now he saw a likeness. She had the same look Omri had seen in Patrick's face so many times when he had made up his mind to do something outrageous. What are you on about? He said. He asked sharply. I picked out that girl from my model set. I'm going to make her real and I'm going to keep her forever. Omri almost pushed her out of the way. You're mad, he said shortly. He was still breathless from his run and from, stilt and from stifled panic. His brain wasn't working well and he couldn't cope with this new threat. He bent to the entrance of the, of the longhouse. Matron! She emerged. Her headdress was all bent which happened only when she was thoroughly flustered. My dear, she cried, 
her hand on her thin bosom, as if to restrain her heart from leaping out of it. I thought you and Patrick were giants, that some people came into the room who were even bigger than you. I think they were looking for something. I ducked back into the longhouse the second I saw them and ordered all my patients to keep absolutely silent. Luckily, the giants only glanced around once and then went out again. But, oh, dear me, it was bad. It was a bad moment. You did the right thing, matron. Now I have to send you back. Not a moment too soon, and I think I can fairly say I'm leaving all my patients well on the road to recovery. How will you send them back? The non-ambulatory cases. Don't worry, I've thought about that. When the chest was empty, he would put the whole seed tray, complete with the longhouse and occupants, into it. That way, he wouldn't have to move the injured Indians individually. But he thought he had better send Matron back through the cupboard in case she wound up in the wrong place. Matron stepped gingerly onto Omri's hand and knelt down to keep her balance as he airlifted her into the cupboard. She was looking at him closely. My boy? Yes? You look worried. Am I wrong in thinking that something has happened to... to change the situation radically? You're not wrong, Matron. You, I'm afraid I won't be bringing you back again. She stepped off his hand into the cupboard. She cleared her throat loudly. I can see there is no time for prolonged farewells. She straightened her uniform skirt and checked her pocket to make sure they had all her little bits and pieces. Her hand strayed once for her, her hand strayed once to her cap, and Omri thought he saw her furtively wipe her eyes with the tail end of one of the floating ribbons attached to it. He knew she would have felt he would have felt tearful himself if it were not for his desperate pre preoccupations. "'You've been absolutely wonderful. I'll miss you,' he said sincerely. "'Oh, pish tush, and likewise!' But she choked on the last word and simply put out her hand to touch the tip of his finger, which he extended to her. "'You'd better hurry,' said Emma. "'Here, let me do it!' And before Omri knew what was happening, she had shut the door with a thump and turned the key. Omri stood silent, his heart beating, feeling the pressure of time, of all the grown-ups waiting downstairs and realized he was putting off the moment when he would open the chest. Then he was aware that Emma was standing there with the key clutched in her hand. "'Now I want my red girl,' she said. "'You're not to bring anything to life now,' Omri retorted. "'I can't let you. If you can't see why not, then, then I just wish I'd never let you in on it.' Emma's hard, almost Tamsin-like look softened. "'Please, Omri, just give her to me.' All right, I won't do anything. Just let me have her. Omri reached into his pocket. Right, give me the key. There was a moment, a bad moment, when he thought she was going to refuse. God, this was scary. The very people you trusted the most could become strangers in their longing for a little person of their own. It was worse than the way people behaved over gold. If Emma could frighten him like this, what would happen if the grown-ups ever... Suddenly an awful thought struck him, and he stiffened with horror. Mr. Johnson... Mr. Johnson knew he was downstairs now, and there was absolutely nothing to stop him from blowing the whole secret wide open. That was what he had come for, and that was what he would do. No sooner had this thought surfaced than he heard something. Emma heard it too. Both their heads snapped around to face the door. They're coming up here, all of them, she breathed. Oh, God, whispered Omri, closing his eyes in despair. He's told them. And that is the end of chapter 16.